Hey, what's up, everybody? Thank you for downloading episode 130 of We Got This with Mark and Hal. Hey, we're just a couple weeks away from Dragon Con Labor Day weekend in Atlanta, Georgia. Mark and I will be there. We're doing signings. We're doing panels. We're doing shows, including a live recording with special guest Scott Adsit overturning the episode you voted on during Max Fun Drive, that being best superpower. We will have a new answer on that one, all going down at Dragon Con. You can also get tickets to our live New York City show that's going to be sunday october 8th at the hudson mercantile at 6 p.m you do not need a comic-con badge to come see the show but you do need tickets and you can get them at bit.ly forward slash we got ny that is all lowercase but for now please enjoy episode 130 of we got this with mark and hal hello i'm hal lublin and i'm mark gagliardi since the dawn of humanity one issue has gone unsettled with the fate of the world in the balance, we're here to settle once and for all. Streaming TV Smackdown. That's right. Don't worry, everyone. We got this. Podcast should have a theme song. Podcast should not have a theme song. Yes, they should. No, they shouldn't. They sound good. Yeah, but people are just going to skip past it. Hmm. You know what? You're right. We got this. How we're going to do something today we've never done before. Never, ever? Never, ever. Tell me what we're going to do that is We random. are going to cover two topics from our list. Then we are going to pit the winner of each of those topics against each other. When you said we're going to do two topics, I was mm-hmm. like, we've done that before because it's a clean slate. Sure. A clean slate will do. We'll do 10 topics. But this is like a super episode. This is we're like doing a super episode. We're doing like two episodes, mm-hmm. but then the winners of those episodes are going to face yeah. off. So it's basically three episodes. Yeah. And you know what? It's um it, by proxy, the two people who suggested the topics are going to be battling. Wow. Yeah. I have to so say- So who is in the ring? Uh, we've got Christian Ang, or okay. Ang, Christian Ang via email, um, and Matthew Birdsey. And Matthew Birdsey, Christian and Matthew duking it out in the finals. Because what did Christian ask? Uh, Christian asked Netflix versus Hulu versus Amazon Prime Video. Great. And then what did Matthew ask? Matthew asked streaming or cable, which we, which I would take to be broadcast television, so right. cable slash satellite television. Right. Uh, cord cutting, like. To cord or not to cord. Correct. So the way we're going to do this episode is we're going to do Netflix versus Hulu versus Amazon. Then we're going to do uh, to cord or not to cord. And the winner of each of those are going to duke it out for how you should be getting all of your media exclusively for all of eternity. You know, uh, normally when you text me an idea for an episode Mm -hmm. and you say, I have a crazy idea. I You hate it. I get scared. I do not (laughs) like it. I will admit that. I'm resistant. I'm a, I'm yeah. a real butthole about it sometimes. You really didn't like that doctor one. I, well, that, <laughs> neither do some of the people who <laughs> listen to the show. But, uh, I think that, that when you told me this idea, I was like, oh, that's brilliant. I like it a lot. Hey, thanks. I'm on board. I was like, I'm just going to accept the good. I was, look, I'll admit right now mm-hmm. on this podcast, I was resistant to doing texting or calling. Mm-hmm. With Paul, mm-hmm. like I was like, I don't know if that's the like. Told you, man. not that he can't talk about anything, but I was like, I don't know if that's the right one. And then you were right, one hundred percent right on that one. So well, there you go. Here's hoping I'm right about this one. This episode could be a train wreck. Can't wait! It'll be a beautiful train wreck. <laughs> it'll it'll be All like right. unbreakable. So we'll let's start with Christians. Stage. Okay, let's start with um, uh, Netflix, Hulu, or Amazon Prime. I'm new to Amazon Prime, so I do not know what is on it except Paget's season of community which i watched in its entirety amazon prime is a little different than netflix or hulu in Mm. in in this regard netflix or or hulu if you pay the subscription fee you get the entire library of videos that they have available right now with hulu there are two levels you can pay for basic which is 7.99 a month and then i think for 11.99 a month you get no ads so you, you but there's no extra content. It's just no ads. That's correct. With okay. Amazon Prime, you get a, a very large library of film and television and their original titles. Mm-hmm. However, they do have other uh, uh, films that are only available if you rent them. 
So with right. Amazon Prime Video, you get a certain amount of content for free, but it's the same with Netflix. Netflix is not a complete library. There are things that are taken off and put back in uh, over time. Is Hulu a complete library? Does Hulu leave everything up permanently? Because that drives me crazy about Netflix is I'll put something in my queue and then it'll just be gone. Right. Yeah, that's that's the issue. I don't think that Hulu's library is permanent either. I think especially mm-hmm. with their film – and they've, uh, they've more recently added films. Right. Their film collection is – Generally pretty terrible. It used to be way worse. Now it's much better. Okay. You, Cause it, like the only watchable movie on there, I was like, I'll look on Hulu and see if there's any good movies on here. Right. And I think the only watchable movies I found were Starship Troopers and Harvey. And only one of those is actually watchable. Yeah. Harvey's good. <laughs> How dare you? <laughs> How dare you think I was going to come out and defend Starship Troopers? Ah, oh, that movie's <laughs> awesome. Um, Hulu. Okay, so for those who don't know, um, which I assume most people do, Netflix. Um, the the pros of Netflix. I'll I'll give a brief overview. The net Netflix you give is, the history too. Uh, well, let's give you give the history in a minute because you're the one with the laptop in front of you. Okay. Uh, Netflix has the uh the, the superior collection of movies, uh, and their original programming programming is fantastic. Uh, they've, they've been putting out some amazing shows. Orange is the New Black, uh, Glow, um, just a lot of really great stuff. Okay. Uh, that's, those are the first two that popped in my head and apparently the only two. Um, Hulu, while their movie collection is not great. Wait, what were the two series you had for Netflix? You had Orange Glow? is the New Black and Glow. What about House of Cards? House of Cards, thank you. I was just, th- this is just what's popping into my head. Luke Cage? All right. Daredevil? Dare- Jessica yeah, Jones? Yeah, sure. They're all great. The Crown? Oh my god. Um, so really Netflix is like another HBO. They've all become, they've all now become studios mm-hmm. in addition to, they were all distributors originally. Right. Um, well, let me finish this real quick. Yeah, yeah, though, yeah. Cause yeah. you're going to get into that history in a moment. Sure. Um, Hulu, while they have this uh, inferior movies, their, their television is up to date and that is a big deal for me. Yes. I can watch what happened last night on television on Hulu the next day, whereas it could be a year or two before it winds up on Netflix. So I feel like Netflix for movies and their original series, Hulu for current television, right? Amazon prime for, uh, I don't know. It feels like the Costco free samples Amazon where prime, the other ones are meals. They also, they're not going to win. Uh, Amazon prime does have some interesting, uh, original stuff. Uh, they've got Mozart in the Jungle. They do. Uh, yeah. Alpha House. They do have some, their original stuff's really cool. They, uh, they all yeah. have, uh, um, um, I, why can't I think of the show with Jeffrey Tambor? That, transparent. Yes, Transparent. That is also an, an, an Amazon mm-hmm. series. Uh, they, so they, they're no slouch in independent production. They all have, they, they've all put out pretty great original I, programs. I, I agree. I'm just not a big fan of the way Amazon Prime does their, uh, that some things you have to rent and some things are free. That said, Amazon Prime is free with an Amazon Prime membership. Right. So you're getting the free shipping. You're getting yeah. Amazon Music or Amazon MP3, whatever they call that. Yeah. And you're getting Amazon Prime Video. Uh, so here's what I think. Here's, here's how I think we should break this down. Okay. Um, I think part of it's going to be library, mm-hmm. uh, like just the overall library of content. Great. I think second is, a, is original content. Great. And I think the third should be the user interface. Okay. How easy is it to use? How good is it at suggesting things for you? Mm-hmm. Um, so a brief history of each. Netflix uh, has been around since 1997. It's almost 20 years old. And originally, and I, it blows my mind that there may be people alive and in college who don't remember this, but it was originally a rental service that cut out the in-store brick-and-mortar aspect. So you would go online and you would pick a movie you wanted to see and they would send you a disc in an envelope. You would get it in like a couple days. You would watch it and then you'd mail it back and the next film in your in your queue got mailed to you. Mm-hmm. And you did not have to pay a per rental fee. You paid a subscription fee for mm-hmm. it, if I remember right. right. Or maybe they and that library is, still exists and is – Massive. Yeah. In fact, I still, I think I still have a Wizard of Oz disc in an envelope somewhere that I never mailed back. Is that why you haven't received the rest of your queue yet? That's right. And now I'll never get. You've been paying eleven ninety nine a month for this Wizard of Oz disc. Yeah. Now I'll never get Survivor Token Teens disc three. <laughs> I heard a, uh, I heard a great line from the creator of Netflix uh, years ago. Yeah. Someone mentioned, they said, so are you, um, wh- why are you making this shift? Why are you switching from 
mailing the DVDs to people and trying to do everything online now. And he said, well, that was always the plan. The company isn't called DVD mail. It's called <laughs> Netflix. <laughs> and the, uh, the anchor thought, oh, oh, I guess that makes sense. <laughs> It does. It yeah. does. They, look, they've always been forward thinking. Mm-hmm. They helped drive Blockbuster out of business. Yeah. Blockbuster pivoted way too late. If I'm not mistaken. Did Blockbuster make an attempt? I feel like Netflix, uh, might have come to Blockbuster. Uh, they, they made, there was an acquisition offer. Uh, they, they offered in 2000, this is mm-hmm. three years in, they went to Blockbuster and said, buy us for $50 million. Wow. And Blockbuster. $50 million dollars is the cost of half a season of one of their shows. Yes. And Blockbuster, uh, said, nope, no thank you. So two years later, they had their IPO. They sold 5.5 million shares of common stock at the price of $15 a piece. So that's roughly $80 million they were worth on the day of their IPO. And they offered to be bought for for $50 million. And that is like Blockbuster's folly. That is mm-hmm. what drove them out of business. They did not see that model working out. And my God, one of yeah. the, that's one of those major mistakes of like, how could you, this is that moment in defending your life <laughs> where Albert Brooks doesn't invest in Seiko. Yeah. <laughs> this is the, the Japanese don't know how to make a watch. Um, <laughs> But so they've been around the longest. Mm-hmm. They were streaming before either of the other services. Hulu is only ten years old, and Hulu did, as you pointed out, started out as the TV service. It's right. it's owned almost equally by NBC, ABC, and Fox, which is why you don't really get CBS content on there. CBS has always been an outlier on these. CBS has their CBS Now or CBS yes, All Access, All Access, which is just them being a jerk. Yes. Uh, yeah, that's just Les Moonves being a jerk. Yes. Um, also Viacom recently left, mm-hmm. which does not make me happy because that Hulu was how I used to get the Daily Show every day. That's right. So all of the Comedy Central shows are gone from Hulu. Yeah, that's that's another part of the issue is mm-hmm. you you get networks that leave and then you can't get that out. You yeah. can't get that anymore because now all a lot of uh, like a company like Viacom will probably start its own streaming service and they'll have MTV and they'll have Comedy Central. Yeah. So and now I'm going to have to have yet another $8 a month charge for th- that stuff. 100%. Um, Amazon Video has been around uh, since 2006. So it is the middle child in uh, in this family of streaming – of the big three streaming services. Um, but- All right. Now that we have the history. Okay. So let's start with criteria. What do you want to start with? Let's start with user interface. Um, that seems the least – uh, because there's a million different user interfaces. Each, like a Roku interface is different than a web browser interface is different from an Apple TV interface. Yes, but even if you, I think no matter how you slice it, mm-hmm. Netflix has the best user interface. Yeah, I think you're right. I think it's more, uh, more intuitive. Now they've had their missteps. They used to have the thing where they had you pick out movies that you like. You'd do like a quiz mm-hmm. and then it would try to find stuff for you, but they've always been dedicated to, to studying the uh, the browsing patterns of their members, right, in order to serve them up content that they'll watch. Yeah, the you might also like on uh, Netflix is always pretty dead on. Yes, and it's great for uh, their setup is really good for families because mm-hmm. I have my own profile on Netflix mm-hmm. and Jennifer has her own profile on right. Netflix, so we don't always watch the same stuff. And that way, I'm not getting suggestions that are for her. And she's not getting suggestions that are for right. me. So it, it, it's just hands down a better user interface. And I would say second is probably uh, Amazon Prime Video. Amazon looks cluttered to me because it's part of Amazon. So like I'm seeing – I see their interface for – and I, I, I've only done it via – uh, web browser. Right. Um, but I see their interface and it's like, oh, there's also ads for spatulas on the side. You know what I mean? It feels like, yes. it feels like a cluttered Amazon web page to me. That's true. That, like the browsing o- online is a little bit better. Like on, on, I'll watch, we watch Amazon Prime on PlayStation 4. Mm-hmm. Everything else we watch on Apple TV. Okay. And the Hulu, 
Hulu just recently in the last year updated their UX or user experience that, or user interface Ooh, UI. Ooh, look at you using fancy tech words. Well, I do work for a website, swagbooks.com, wow. the number one place for online rewards. I just made up that song. Um, but it's really confusing. It's not very intuitive. I, I just don't And it doesn't like, have Comedy Central anymore. It doesn't have Comedy Central anymore. It's, it feels like it's harder to find stuff that I like and that is – a huge it's way easier on the web right. their web interface is better but their their interface on devices is not really good and that and still a lot of people are consuming their media that way yeah it's hulu does the, the what hulu presents up front to you um <laughs> like whereas netflix if i watch a documentary netflix will say oh you might also like these other documentaries right when you go to Hulu, it's suggestions for Mark, the current slate of primetime television shows. Yes. Oh, you watch this thing. You might also like the current slate of primetime television shows. Yeah. <laughs> and I guess that comes from it being owned by the networks. Right. Absolutely. Um, so Netflix wins on the interface. Let's talk about the catalog of programming. Okay. Um, Netflix is movies, Hulu is TV, and Amazon Prime is a sampler. But Netflix is also comedy. They're Netflix does – their st- the stand-up on Netflix is great. Yes. Everybody's – the best stand-up specials wind up on Netflix, I think. Absolutely. It's pretty much the home – they've taken over what HBO used to be yeah. in terms of original comedy specials. Now that's yeah. Netflix. That's they've, their domain. They've also taken over what HBO currently is – of uh critically acclaimed series. They've certainly moved into the space. Yeah. I think HBO helped lay the groundwork mm-hmm. by showing that a premium cable channel could create high quality programming. Right. They've been doing it for decades sure. now. Since uh Dream On and Yes. What was before Dream On was great. First in ten, not First necessarily ten. the news. Oh yeah. Uh Tales from the Crypt. Tales from the Crypt. Well, but HBO's not on this list. HBO, no, they're not on. So here. let's no talk HBO about what go. Netflix. L- let's talk about. Um, I feel like you can't. You, I know you separated them before, but I feel like you can't talk about the catalogs without lumping in the original shows with that. Right. Uh, okay. So you want to start with Netflix? Yeah. Okay. Let's. I'm just going to give you a few of the drama series that they put out. Mm-hmm. We'll we'll talk drama series for each one. Okay. We've got House of Cards, Orange Is the New Black, Marco Polo, Bloodline, Sense Eight, Narcos. Stranger Things. Oh, come on. The Get Down, The Crown, The OA, A Series of Unfortunate Events. That's the NPH version, the new series. Yes, which is brilliant. So good. Um, 13 Reasons Why, the highly controversial teen drama. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't want to see it. I know how it ends. Gypsy and Ozark. I heard Ozark's fantastic. That's the new one. That's right. The so, new Jason Bateman, right? Right. All right. So what are uh, Hulu's original? Okay. Hulu's original programs. This is in the drama category. The Confession. East Los High. 11 which is the one where James Franco keeps traveling back to the day that JFK was yeah, assassinated. Quantum Leap, but for one thing. Yes. The Path. Mm-hmm. Chance. Shut Eye. Harlots. Dimension 404. And, of course, The Handmaid's Tale. Hilarious show. Just a real knee slapper. Um, so that that is not as good as Netflix. Not as good as Netflix. But here is Amazon Prime. We've got Bosch, Hand of God, The Man in the High Castle, which is really mm-hmm. good. Mad Dogs, The Collection, Goliath, which is a really good uh, legal drama with Billy Bob Thornton. Mm-hmm. We've got Good Girls Revolt, which kind of didn't make it that far. Uh, did you ever see Good Girls Revolt? Mm-hmm. It's about a, a group of women who work at a newspaper in the 60s. Oh, yes. I, I, I saw the trailers for it. It looked yes. cool. Uh, including a young Nora Ephron. Somebody plays a young yeah. Nora Ephron in that, if I'm not mistaken. Maybe I'm, maybe I'm misremembering. Who knows? Sneaky Pete. Sneaky Pete is fantastic. Okay. Uh, I feel like you're just pitching me shows and going, come on, let's give something besides Netflix a chance. And no, then Netflix is going to win. Sneaky Pete is Giovanni Rubizi as a con man who, who pretends that he was is his cellmate to get away from a gangster who mm-hmm. who he owes money to? Uh, it's uh, it's really really good. I highly recommend. I will it. check it out. Z, the beginning of everything. Patriot and the last tycoon. Clearly in it's drama, Netflix. Netflix wins. Right. Uh, also, let me throw in these other Netflix series. 
Marvel's Daredevil, Marvel's Jessica Jones, Marvel's Luke Cage, Marvel's Iron Fist, and coming in just a few weeks, uh, as Marvel's, of this recording. All of them put together. Marvel's The Defenders. Right. All of them put together. All right, let's talk about comedy. Okay. We have in Netflix, Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt, Gracie and, Grace and Frankie, Master of None, the second season of which I would contend is one of the greatest seasons of television I've mm-hmm. ever seen and has the single greatest episode of television I have ever seen. Wow. With Bob and David, which is the sort of Mr. Show continuation. Mm-hmm. Uh, Love, which just completed its second season. Fuller House, a little something mm. stole down memory lane. Uh, Flaked, The Characters, The Ranch, Lady Dynamite. How many of these are there for each of them? Do we have to go through all of them or can we just say There the are a ones? ton of these. I mean. Yeah, I, we can stop there. Netflix wins. Yeah, they do. <laughs> They do. In the streaming service battle, every criteria Netflix has won. I do want to give a shout out to uh, James Urbaniak in Difficult People. Yes. Which is a hilarious show. Um, and also, the one thing Hulu has comedy wise that is fantastic is the Triumph the Insult comic dog, uh, oh, political specials, which are, which oh, are yes. great. I thought you were talking about a new regular show. Uh, but this, the first half of this episode is done. It's Netflix. It's Netflix. So do we need to do a asked and answered for each of these? I'll just say people of the world. Here we go. Netflix is the best. It's just the best. You can watch all of them. That's fine. But just there's something amazing about Netflix. And if you haven't dug into some of these series we talked about, why don't you do it? I haven't even gotten into BoJack Horseman. How? Wet Hot American Bojack Horseman is, Yes, they're all great. Nobody wants to listen to us just read a list of TV Guide. Are you sure? Yes, the I'm TV positive. Guide is not a thing anymore. I think we could bring it back as a podcast. So moving on to Matthew. Before we get into that, mm-hmm. why don't we take a commercial break and hear from some of the great shows on the Maximum Fun Network. Great. My leg is so asleep. Well, we'll wake it up. Hi, I'm comedian Emily Heller. And I'm cartoonist Lisa Hannawalt. And we're the hosts of Baby Geniuses. Do you want to learn weird new facts? Do you like hearing successful creative women talk about their poop? Do you want the scoop on Martha Stewart's pony? If you answered yes to any of these questions, our show is for you. We interview people like Paul F. Tompkins, Kristen Shaw, Michael Che, and more. So check us out on Maximum Fun. And let us mess up your brain. Yes, please. Baby Geniuses, we know everything. Baby Geniuses, tell us something we don't know. Following the news is hard and it sucks. How do you know which stories are important? Which sources do you trust in this post-truth world of reactionary journalism? I'm Brent Black. And I'm Travis McElroy. And we host a podcast called Trends Like These. We cover trending news stories. We debunk misleading clickbait headlines. And we always try to throw in a little bit of good news. In our quest for truth! So join us every week on MaximumFun.org or wherever podcasts are found. Matthew Birdsey, you're up. All right. Now, what we're going to talk about here is um, streaming services, but streaming services for live television versus having cable um, or a satellite. Yep. Um, because basically, should you cut the cord or not? Cord or no cord? Right. So the argument in favor of cord... It's not a great argument because I feel like cord is kind of the blockbuster of what's happening now with everything that's coming out. The, the big benefit to the cord is that you get local channels and we've already established that you should binge watch. Yes. So, and that is more of a feature of streaming. Right. That being said, DVR is another big thing that you can uh, DVR and, and binge watch that way. Yeah. And, and, and also just DVR in general is tough to find without spending way more money on a streaming live television service. Plus, unless you're, you're Netflix or Hulu, which has what seems like an ever diminishing group of shows that are available. Do you want to wait a year? Six months to a year to watch a show that was just out. <laughs> maybe you, yeah. maybe you do. Some people don't care. Some people really don't care. Yeah, like, I'm I'll not, watch it eventually. I'm, that's the way I am with most shows. Is, I know that you binge shows constantly. Is there any show that you need to watch when it comes out? Um, yes. Uh, 
But they're on network television. I can't wait for they're this. Not binge, they're not really binge shows. What? They're network TV shows. But I will binge them if I haven't seen a few episodes. Well, I watch, you know, like, I watch Colbert and, and John Oliver and all the political right. satire comedians I really love. Okay. Um, but as far as narrative television, it's, for me, it's Marvel's Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Okay. And Brooklyn Nine-Nine. Sure. Those are my two. Like, I have an hour long and I have a half hour show. And those have been, for the last couple of years... My, this is my appointment viewing. I got to watch it the day it comes out. 100%. Now, Brooklyn Nine-Nine is available on Hulu because Fox is a one-third partner. Right. So that one, that maybe not doesn't matter as much. As far as the streaming goes. But, I mean, we talked about the streaming services. This is more about how do you want to get live television. And But the DVR is a big part of it. Each of them offers streaming versions within their individual native apps. Now, when I'm talking about the streaming apps, the ones that are the big ones right now, uh, this is a, this genre is in it, genre, this, um, industry, I guess. Media platform Media, type. Thank you. I don't sure. know these words. Uh, <laughs> this platform is in its infancy right now. Okay. In fact, I think the version of, uh, DirecTV now that I use is still a beta. Okay. Um, but the, the big players are Sling TV. Right. Uh, um, YouTube TV. Right. Voodoo. Voodoo. Uh, I don't know. Voodoo is it? Is Voodoo a live one? I think Voodoo is a Hulu, live one. Uh, Hulu Live. Right. And, um, PlayStation View. PlayStation View. So PlayStation View, YouTube uh, TV, uh, Hulu Live and Direct TV Now and Sling. So those are the five. I'll tell you a while ago, because mm-hmm. I have trip, like a triple play package here. I do mm-hmm. home phone, internet and cable. Mm hmm. And the the fee had gotten out of hand, like mm-hmm. way too much money was being spent. So I called, I, I did like a full spreadsheet. Mm-hmm. I was like, all right, what do I pay? Because I, I do Netflix, Hulu, Amazon Prime, uh, like a couple, like it just for all those things together, how much, how much am I paying plus cable? Now, if I eliminated cable and I just did internet, how much is that? Mm-hmm. And if I threw in, uh, HBO, like what are the net, what are the things that I need to watch that I like to have? Um, and it was like 60 or $70 less. Yeah. So I called the cable company and I said, I'm switching and they, this is time Warner now spectrum said, mm-hmm. let me, uh, let me take a look here. And, uh, what if I gave you this price? And they gave me a price that was $5 less than if I cut the cord. Oh, wow. went to and at the time well they know that people are doing this now. right but i'll tell you the the service i was going to use was mm-hmm. playstation view right partially because i have a playstation 4 mm-hmm. but partially because i need to watch wrestling live every week and that is on the usa network right and they had the usa network live they have a cloud feature that's like a dvr mm-hmm. so they've really i, I was really impressed with with that with they service. are generally regarded, I think, as the best one. If you have a PlayStation, that there's no question. Cut the cord, get this. Um, right. If you don't have a PlayStation, then it's for me because I've been dealing with this moving into a new place. I've been dealing with because I don't want a cord. When I was in New York, I uh, I told them I wanted to get rid of cable and just do Netflix and Hulu, and they said you want to be part of our pilot program at Spectrum, and I said what's that? They said we give you a free Roku, and we now have an app based version of cable in New York. And I was like, oh, that sounds like exactly what I want, and it was great. It was thirty thirty five bucks a month, okay, uh, which is roughly what all of the streaming services hover around, or the the streaming live television services hover around. Yes, uh, I, think I think mine was like forty five dollars. The package yeah. I was going to because do you got the bucks. extra uh, DVR and everything. Else yes. Um, it is – so the pros for the streaming services uh, are that it is way cheaper, uh, generally speaking, because I think we were paying upwards of 80 bucks a month for cable in New York because you're renting the box from them and you've got the line access fees and you've got a million things that stack up. Yes. Uh, the benefit to not cutting the cord, to actually having the cord is right. um, they have a native DVR. Um, that you can have, but if you've got a cloud DVR, it doesn't matter if you have a native DVR in your place anyway. So that becomes a wash. Uh, but you get local channels, um, uh, because none, uh, and we, we've talked before about how CBS just doesn't like to play with anyone. So CBS, you can't get anywhere. Right. But most of these services, 
uh, do not have all the channels that cable can get you. Aside from just broadcast networks, there are way more channels available on cable than are available on these streaming services. But, you know, you get for 30 bucks a month, you get all the big ones. Yeah, I, that's the problem I have is I like having – I, you know, you like you like having I golf like having too. A ton of channels. Sometimes, yeah. I don't like having a ton of channels. I like having the big ones that I know and trust. Right. And I'm like, I know if I turn on, uh, if I turn on this channel, that this kind of stuff is going to be on. I know if I turn on this channel, this kind of stuff is going to be on. I know most of their programming. I don't want five thousand channels. I don't want it to take me twenty minutes to scroll through. I feel like with streaming mm-hmm. now, especially with stuff like Netflix and Hulu. We've lost a little bit of of what channel surfing brings us, which is discovering a new program that's not like a, a heavy hitter. I think mm-hmm. now when you're with Netflix, it's like, uh, I'm going to just browse through and see what I find. Oh, Breaking Bad. I haven't watched that. Like, of course, everybody mm-hmm. knows Breaking Bad. If you haven't right. watched it, then you can go catch up with it on Netflix. But like I, I, I'll find on like Discovery Home that mm-hmm. they've got like a tiny – like people who make tiny houses – and I'll DVR like three or four episodes of it just because I'm fascinated by the process. And then mm-hmm. I'll move on and maybe find another thing. But I like being able to wander around the channels. And that's something Yeah, that, for me, that's not as – That's not big. That's not a big thing for me. I would much rather have fewer channels that I know. Like I never scroll – even when I had cable, I never scrolled through the whole – I never channel surfed. Right. I always put in my like 20 favorite channels and just click through the favorites button. Oh, see, yeah. I, I, I like to wander around and see what's on everything and like mm-hmm. – Maybe try and find something new. What's on? What can I? What, maybe it's something I've already seen before. Maybe it's something new. And and I don't. There is something kind of fun about like, oh, I just got to the middle of this. My favorite part's coming up. I'm going to sit and mm-hmm. watch it. The the biggest thing for me is live sports. Right. So I am a sports now, fan. Now dig this. Um, I'm digging it. Dig this. That's Brother. that has been the big thing that a lot of people have made their beef with mm-hmm. cord cutting. I'm a big proponent of cord cutting. If you can't tell, I will come down on the side of that and this. What I have done is I have attached for 20 bucks, I got an antenna for my television. Right. And I get, so I get, all I have to do is switch from the HDMI input to the TV input. Uh, and now I have, um, an NBC, additional NBC. 40 channels. 40. Oh, yeah. Get because the local... there's all those weird little like, like channel seven is ABC, but channel 7.2 is, ABC, uh, cooking and lifestyle, or it's all these sort of like <laughs> bizarre little, that's how I get my bizarre little side channel stuff. I see. And I've discovered things like cozy TV, which is, uh, retro, uh, sitcoms, or I've discovered, or laugh is retro sitcoms. Cozy is retro TV. Uh, buzzer is old game shows. Like these are all buried Ooh. in broadcast television, just over the air for free. Do you feel like, and oh, to finish that though. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Sport, uh, most of the streaming services now have ESPN because that's always the most expensive channel, but most of them have now added ESPN. Right. And, um, which is a lot of sports and, uh, the big stuff, uh, for NFL and MLB, NBA, all of that is on either TNT, which is one of the channels they have or the networks, which you can get through an antenna. And sports you watch live anyway. You're not going to DVR a basketball game. Right. I guess ultimately I – Are me, you realizing in this moment that you're wasting your money and I'm telling you this and now that's why you're so reluctant because <laughs> no, nobody I, likes to be told they're wrong? I get it. No, I get it. I get the, the value of cord cutting. I'm a mensch. I'm willing to admit when I'm wrong. I did it with calling I'm not saying you're texting. wrong if you got this deal where you're – yeah, less that, cord cutting. Yeah, costs. like I know how to get to, to a point where I'm like. But if you don't have that deal, I'm sorry to mean to interrupt. No, no. I first of all, you can almost always get that deal. Here, I'm gonna Uncle Hal's gonna school you for a second. Here, here that the, water droplet was me almost doing a spit. <laughs> <laughs> there are a few immutable rules to dealing with customer service for a product like that. Number one is it's usually three no's to a yes, so you have to be patient and keep asking for a manager. Ultimately, you want to wind up in either customer care or customer retention. And those are the people where when you tell – because every person you speak to only has a certain amount of deal that they're authorized to make. 
and the people who are the last line of please don't leave have the most leeway. So either the, either they'll be able to meet it or they won't. Sometimes mm-hmm. you don't know. Either way, you're better off because you either know you're getting the very best deal by cutting the cord or like me, you get a killer deal and I still see the charges. They are exactly the same. They mm-hmm. threw in HBO for free. They oh, were wow. like, here, here's what we'll do. We'll give you the same package you have now. Plus we'll give you HBO for free forever. Uh, and, and at this price. And I was like, I looked at the spreadsheet and even with the streaming services that I pay for, it was less money. Mm-hmm. I said, and all right, I'll take I the deal. do not know how to make a spreadsheet. So I just do apps. <laughs> <laughs> the nice thing about those streaming services as well, another benefit to that, just mm-hmm. in mentioning apps, uh, I can now watch live, uh, live cable television from anywhere. Uh, as opposed to, um, you know, watching at home, I can be in line for something. And if I'm like, oh, you know what? Um, Diners, Drive-Ins, and Dives is on. I should watch this. And then your phone just sprouts a bleached goatee. <laughs> and starts suddenly. To- why is my phone suddenly drenched in queso? Yeah. <laughs> that was so gross. It just um, turns into that, that Cadillac he drives around or ugh, whatever. Yeah. Um, so – you make a compelling argument, but for the bulk of people who are not going to take the time to make the spreadsheet, see how much it is all, you know, to do all of that extra work, I feel like, I feel like cord cutting has to win. That's this adulting. One. You're adulting. I am adulting. I'm doing it right now. I'm being a real adult. Oh man. Uh, here, here's and the other thing. I poured a bag of peanuts into a diet Coke today. <laughs> what? You never do that? No. Oh, it's delicious. Peanuts in a Diet Coke. My grandma. Or peanuts in a Coke. Mike, it's a Southern thing. Is it? Can I tell tell you a ridiculous? I don't, I don't think that. It's a very Southern second. thing. Pouring peanuts into a bottle of Coke. Hold Our on Southern a listeners. Hold on. Hey, Jen. Jen. Oh, she. I hope she wasn't sleeping. No. Oh, did we catch you like? Can you come here for a second, no. sweetheart? Okay. Have you did you did you hear what we were talking about just now? I heard I heard something about diet Pepsi and some kind of can some kind of candy. <laughs> so have you ever you were from the South, correct? Yes. Have you ever in your life put a bag of peanuts into a Coke? You know that sounds really familiar. Thank you. <laughs> what? It's a southern thing. It is. My I grandfather do. used to do I, it. I he have taught like it to me. Faint memories from childhood of yeah. seeing that, and I'm sure I tasted it. Yeah. 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 Thank you, sweetheart. <laughs> yes. Thank you, sweetheart. <laughs> what? What world is this? This is why you lost the Civil War. <laughs> You're so busy putting farmed nuts into soda drinks. Oh. Did they you just refer lost. to peanuts as farmed nuts? Like they are just farmed nuts. Sneak in an insult to George Washington Carver? No, that's not an insult. They're farmed nuts. Oh, hold on, Jennifer's back. Here's a little tidbit. My grandfather was actually an award-winning peanut farmer in Florida and had some of the largest peanut output in Florida for many years. So it sounds that's like right. it sounds like your refuting of what Hal said comes from expertise and knowledge. Absolutely. We would have peanut boils. I'm sure some peanuts went in some coke. I love boiled peanuts. But by mistake or on purpose? On purpose. Hal, you're right. not going to win this. I guess not. I don't, I'm not even trying to win this. I'm trying to understand. <laughs> this is why you've lost this. But I have seen the, the trophy for peanut farming does sit uh, by the fireplace. Mazel tov. In the Kelly home. That's pretty amazing. Thank you very much. Um, I have nothing to do with it. Uh, while you were talking about customer retention, I'll tell you another quick story. Go ahead. Um, I, uh, I once years and years ago called AOL to cancel my AOL service. What did they answer the phone? Welcome. Yeah. <laughs> You've got mail because I was switching to broadband and didn't want dial up AOL service anymore. Right. And, uh, I called and I told them that. And the woman on the other end of the phone said, well, you know, AOL works with your, um, with your new broadband service. You can use us as an interface. Oh. And I went, oh, oh, oh. hang on a second. You're trying to tell me that I should be paying for my newfangled, uh, my newfangled broadband, broadband service. And yet I should still do it through AOL just so that I can have your homepage pop up. And this is what I heard on the other end of the phone. 
<sighs> yes. <laughs> and I started laughing. I said, do you get a lot of calls like this one? And she said, it's all I do all day. Oh, no. <laughs> Is people canceling AOL. <laughs> it's like she was on the Titanic as it was sinking. <laughs> and she knew it. Um, so she just answered the phone, near my God to thee. Yeah. <laughs> Um. All right. So, who's? What do, what do you think? I mean, I I still I still like having everything. I get that it's that it's you wanna less go, cost. You want to go channel surfing, well, Grandpa? No, no, I get it's less. I get it's less cost, but you're also have like, well, when I want to watch this show, I do this service, and then I have to do this service of this show. So you've got a patchwork of different services to watch what could all be on one box, very easily done with a remote. But I also get it's not like you. It's not like you have to solve the Sphinx's riddle to open up Hulu right. or Netflix. I, if I could cut the cord, I guess I would. For yeah. me, it's not cost effective to do it. Right. Because I've already figured out how to get my price as low as I can. I also don't like having cable running around my apartment because – But there's – do you see cable running around this apartment? No. But I I don't know what your plan is here. This is a newish building. You don't right? know what my plan is. I don't know what they. I don't know if you're allowed to like cut holes in the wall and drill. And well, put most things modern through. buildings have outlets for cable. Right. That is what I do not have. I mean, I have an outlet for cable, but it's not like in the right spot. So right. you've got to have like there's a white cable going around the bottom of your floor and then up over the doorway and then down and around and. That's just because your building was originally just the housing for the little rascals. <laughs> Every time I leave the house, I have a trail of sausages hanging out my back pocket. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> PD's paw prints are yeah. just in the cement in front of your steps. Uh, um, I'm still saying cut the cord. So then if we're saying cut the cord, then the entire episode is over. Why? Because what is it? Cutting the cord? No, then it becomes versus Netflix. Then it becomes, uh, then it becomes live TV streaming versus Netflix streaming. Okay. Go ahead. You you do the people the work for this one because uh, now we're getting to the point where I'm confused. Okay. People of the world. Hal never lets me do these. So I'm going to do one right now. Cut the cord. How did I do? Did I do okay? You, you were fine. All right. <laughs> so, yeah. Cut the cord. So now the, the that's, battle, it's... That's asked and answered. That's asked and answered. Yeah. Matthew versus Christian. Uh, Christian is, uh, the hill he's gonna die on is Netflix, and the hill that Matthew is gonna die on is, uh, is live streaming television. Okay. Uh, also, fellas, I'm really sorry that you both have to die on a hill today. Yeah. What is that? People stay away from hills. They're very dangerous, <laughs> apparently. Can I give you a one word answer that may end this entire episode right now? Is it Netflix? Sports. Ooh. Yeah. What are you a fan of? You like baseball? You like basketball? Sports ball? Don't and sports also, ball. uh, also pretty much anything that you want, you can, they all have streaming services attached to the television, to the, uh, cord cut television. Yeah. I'll tell you what. I'll do the, I'll do this for you in five. Okay. Five things. Sports, the Oscars, the Grammys, the Tonys, the Emmys. Girl, you had me just at the Tonys. <laughs> In fact, I joined. No, you can't do the Tonys because it's a stupid CBS. I had to join CBS so that I could get the Tonys. If you, I bet you could watch it on PlayStation View. I know you can because mm-hmm. when I did the test, I watched NFL football live on CBS. There you go. So it sounds like I had to listen to dumb Boomer Esiason or whoever do the play by play. Not a fan. So it sounds like the, what's coming out of this is Netflix. You know, won its battle. Cord cutting won its battle. And in the battle of live cord cut television versus Netflix, sports gives the advantage to live cord cut television. I think live events give the advantage. Yeah. yeah. Whether it's like the, what is it? The rose, the rose parade of the roses or I, I, to me, those are, are bigger deals than, than the fantastic original series on Netflix. Yeah. You're right. There's, that's because that's part of the collective experience. Yeah, I mean, there you. It's stuff that you kind of have to be there live to watch. I mm-hmm. think and experience. That's still a shared experience that we can all have in the moment, rather than yeah. We all went and binged this show over the course of like two or three weeks. Everybody's seen it, 
and now we're all going to talk about it as opposed to, hey, did you see last night yeah. when uh, when they performed Guns and Ships live Ooh. on the Tonys? Yeah. Did they do Guns and Ships? Uh, what did Hamilton do on the Tonys? I actually think they did do Guns and Ships. No, you guys, they did uh, this is for our Hamilton fans out No, they there. did. I think they Shout did do out. Guns and Ships. Did they? We got to go look it up now. Um, so this, uh, it's funny. I thought it was going to be Netflix because Netflix so dominated the first half of this. Right. But yeah, live events, like being part of the moment turns out is, uh, is a pretty important thing. Yeah. People of the world be in the moment and, and people of the world who either know that we got it wrong about which Hamilton number it is. Guns and ships, guns and ships, guns and ships. Yeah. Have you gone insane yet? Yeah. Guess what? Uh, now that you've said it, this is canon. That is what they did at the Tonys. <laughs> yeah. And you can, that's also asked and answered. <laughs> you can yell at us all you want. Yell at your phone, yell at your iPod or your Zune or your car stereo. We can't hear you. Yep. We're just as wrong now as we were ever. Which but, is never. That's right. So asked and answered. We are always right. Asked and answered. It's Netflix. Asked and answered. It's streaming live television. Asked and answered. It's streaming live television overall. And guns and ships. Triple. Triple. Hell. Ding, 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 ding. Well done. And on our second episode of the day, I am losing my mind. I know. This is madness. We got to get out of here. <laughs> That's it. Thank you to Christian and Matthew for your suggestions. Those are two that we've nailed. They're done. They're in the, the crypt vault. The <laughs> <laughs> dun, 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 dun. music by Danny Elfman. La, 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 la. That's a, almost. Uh, Wasn't that Scrooged? There, they all have a. Anyway, thank you. That's it. Thank you to. Uh, well, no, I'm not gonna do the thank yous yet. First, I'm gonna say we still want more topics from you. Could you be part of a quadruple play? There's only one way to find out, and that is to suggest topics to us. You can do that in email at we got this podcast at gmail.com or go to the Facebook group where everybody will be telling us what number from Hamilton it was at the Tonys. That's facebook.com slash groups slash we got this podcast. Or you can reach out to us on Twitter at we got this tweets or check out the Maximum Fun subreddit. Thanks, as always, to our musicians, Jonathan Dinerstein and Mike Furman, for our score and theme song, respectively. Thank you to producer Ken Plume, researcher Kate McManus, graphic designer Uri Kelman, and QA engineer Jen Alba. And thank you, of course, to you, our listeners. Um, there's one chord that we won't cut, and that is the umbilical chord that connects us to your life-giving force. So, thank you. Oh, are we the baby? Yeah. Oh, of course we are. Yeah. All of our listeners are our parents. Oh, this is, you just opened a terrible Pandora's box. Oh, yeah. We're going to get yelled at and we cannot borrow the car. Oh. For Hal Lublin, I'm Mark Gagliardi. For Mark Gagliardi, I'm Hal Lublin. And don't worry, everybody. We, we got, got this. this. We got this. Maximumfun.org. Comedy and culture. Artist owned. Listener supported.